Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders. If you want to see more videos like this one, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The fancy YouTube algorithms will rank us higher and enable us to keep making great content for you. Thank you for your time, now let's get into the video. Okay coders, last week I created a video called Repeating Rotations, and in that video we made our base platform rotate back and forth over time. Now, one of our Renaissance Coders community members has asked for more information on how to make this look better than it does, because we have some fairly obvious issues with the way that our script or our level is currently functioning. So let's take a look at what we're currently working with. I'm just going to press the play button here. And as you can see, we've got some balls being instantiated, we've got some wind pushing the balls off, and they're all sort of functioning normally. But when I start adding in more balls, we'll start to see that some of them, like that black one there, just fell straight through the platform. And that's not really a desirable behavior for something like this. We want all of our balls to react to this platform normally. So let's go ahead and stop that playback. Okay, so I should point out that I've spent a lot of time experimenting with this to try and get the best effects, and while we still don't have a perfectly functioning system, we can improve on our current system. Before we go into this though, let's review what we know about collision detection modes for rigid bodies. We have three available settings for the collision detection mode. The three modes are discrete, continuous, and continuous dynamic. And to find those, if we click on an object with a rigid body, go to the rigid body, you can see collision detection. And if we click on the collision detection setting, we can see the three modes that are available to us. Okay, so let's learn a little bit more about what each of these settings is meant for and what it basically does. So the discrete setting basically means that continuous collision detection is off for this rigid body. But we need a little more information than that, right? Well, the discrete setting is the default setting for rigid bodies. So when you add a rigid body to an object, it will always be set to discrete. And this setting is the fastest computational mode available to us. So this one will run much more quickly than the other two. But collisions for this collider will only be checked at the contents time.fix delta time. So what does that mean? Well, basically this means that this mode of collision will not work very well for fast moving objects such as a bullet because a collision could occur between two different frames of fixed delta time. And if a collision were to occur between two of those fixed delta times, then the object would pass through the other collider. So now let's move on to the continuous detection mode. The continuous detection mode is used when we need our object to collide with static mesh geometry. Now with this mode setting, Collisions will be detected for any static mesh geometry in the path of this rigid body, even if the collision should occur between two fixed update steps. Now the first thing we need to answer is, what is a static mesh geometry? Well, a static mesh geometry is any mesh collider that does not have a rigid body component attached to it. So our platform here is actually a static mesh geometry. This setting also prevents rigid bodies with the continuous dynamic setting from passing through this rigid body. So let's say we had two objects with rigid bodies on them, one set to continuous dynamic and one set to continue, continuous, then those would still collide with each other even if they're moving at a fast speed. So what does all this mean? Well, this setting could be useful for something moving quickly like a bullet. And our final setting is the continuous dynamic setting. And the continuous dynamic setting means that continuous collision detection is on for colliding with both static and dynamic geometry. This setting prevents the rigid body from passing through static mesh geometry and through other rigid bodies which have continuous detection enabled. This is definitely the slowest of the modes, computationally speaking, and should only be used for fast moving objects. So you wouldn't want all of your objects to be set to continuous dynamic, because if you did, then you would definitely notice some drops in frame rate and performance. Now that we know a little more about the collision detection modes that are available to us in Unity, we can make a more educated decision on what settings we should use for this scenario. But that is not the Renaissance coders way. We want to show you what each method would look like. So let's try that out. First, we are going to change our prefabs to use the continuous detection and see how well that functions. So we need to go to our prefabs folder here. I'm just gonna select all of my prefabs and we're gonna change the collision detection to continuous. Okay, now that we have that changed, let's play back our scene here and see how well it functions. Well, off the bat, we can see that none of the balls are passing through. We The balls seem to be reacting a little more organically with the platform, but what happens when I start adding in a lot of balls? 
Well, as you, you might have noticed, we already had one pass through this object. So this is still not functioning perfectly when we have a lot of these balls inside of our scene. But this is definitely functioning a little bit better. So let's go ahead and end that playback and we're actually gonna change all of our spheres now to the continuous dynamic and see what happens. So let's press play. Okay, so again, we can see that the balls are reacting with the platform like we would expect them to. We've definitely got some frame rate issues. As you can see with some of the balls, they're, they're stutter or stuttering a little bit and some of the balls are still passing through our platform right there we had two or three pass through so this doesn't really seem to be a huge improvement upon the original but that may be because of the frame rate issues we're having with the setting and all of these game objects you will notice that when I just have a couple of game objects in the scene that they're acting they are reacting to the platform fairly naturally and they're reacting to each other fairly naturally which is good now I do want to go through one more scenario and that is what ha what would happen if we were to add a rigid body to our platform because right now if I click on it you can see that we don't have a rigid body on this platform we just have a box collider so let's actually go ahead and add a rigid body now we're gonna to need to disable gravity and we're actually gonna freeze the position and rotation of this rigid body here so that way it doesn't move on contact and let's see what happens now if I press play. You'll notice that I left it the collision detection to discrete. And again, we've got balls passing through. You know, it seems to have way more passing through now. Our frame rate has dropped drastically with this setting. Um, this uh, black ball that's closest to us is clearly stuttering on the screen. When I drop a lot in, several of them are going to pass through. And, you know, so this setting is, is, does not look very well. It's not functioning very well. So let's stop that and now we're going to go back and let's change this to continuous because if you remember from our earlier review I said that co continuous and continuous dynamic settings work pretty well together. Now I don't know how well, well it's going to function with this many objects being spawned and main, being maintained in our scene but let's find out. So we can immediately see that we're getting some collisions where some things are passing through here. And this is not really functioning all that well. You know, immediately we can see this isn't functioning very well. Honestly, I think this is worse than our initial setting. As you can see right there, we had like five pass through immediately. And that's just really not what we want. So I think that the best setting for this was actually without the rigid body and with our spheres set to continuous. So if we go back now and press play, we can look at this one more time. And we may still have some balls pass through with this setting. Um, you know, if I try to spawn just a ton of them, we may see some try and pass through. Yeah, I think I just saw one. There went one um, that, that will pass through. But this is by far the best setting that we have seen. You know, when, when we had two rigid bodies, they didn't really work all that well together. And I think this may be a, uh, an issue with the Unity engine, you know, as far as... Uh, and the physics that are being calculated and things like that but we have managed to experiment with several settings here now another thing that we could do um, to dive a little deeper into this is look at the profiler and see what sort of impact these different settings are having so if I go to my window and open up my profiler I'm just gonna dock it on the bottom down here now let's see what this setting is doing to our game So it looks like we're running pretty well. We're averaging about, I'm going to say, 100 frames. We're definitely devastating our memory here. We've got a lot of textures being rendered. Our physics is the important thing we want to look at here, right? So we're really, really taxing our physics. We've got a lot of active dynamic objects taking place. And as you can see, we're spiking pretty heavily with that. Okay, so what happens though, if I end that and we change this back to discrete? Oops. Yeah, so they're all still selected. So let's go back to our profiler and let's see if this has any, you know, bearing or impact on our physics. So we do have, well, nope, it just spiked. So <laughs> it looks like we're definitely um, still going to be spiking. As you can see, when I started instantiating more, it ramped up big time right here, and then it's dropping back off. 
So again, I think that the important thing here is, you know, when you're building a game like this in which you need to have a lot of physics going on and a lot of complex collisions occurring, then you may want to experiment with the different settings and see what works best for you. You know, when, we, when we're playing with things like this, it's, it's a deep subject and there's a lot of things that go into it that honestly are, couldn't be answered in a very short tutorial. But I think just going through and looking at the different settings we have available to us and trying out different scenarios, then we can get a better grasp on what we can do within Unity. Okay guys, that's going to do it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. I know I certainly, you know, learned a little more about the different collision modes in Unity by creating this tutorial, and I hope I answered the community members questions regarding this. If you did learn something new, be sure to like and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.